certain as to where I kind of want to go with it. And as we kind of morph the sound a little bit, we're going to try and figure out what types of modulation we want to use in it to try and like make that pad uh, kind of have some nice motion uh, to it over time. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with probably some saw and uh, a little bit of square wave, but uh, also probably just add a little bit of drive to it. Uh, just kind of give it that more beefier analog feel and then we can kind of play with the filter uh, from there. So now we're on the init. So we just have the saw wave going right now. So since this is going to be more of a pad, um, we're going to want to change that amp envelope. So we've got kind of a long attack. We don't necessarily need any decay on it. Um, so I'll turn, I'll leave the decay completely to, to zero have the sustain all the way up and then a relatively high uh, release as well. So, so we're pretty much starting here. And so if I up the attack and the release, drop the decay, ramp that sustain up. So you can see we're already getting to, into pads territory um, at that point. I'm already going to leave the key sync off. You know, maybe we'll have a little bit of diverge. Since we are on the saw, let's just increase its density a bit. Yeah, detune's kind of nice there already. Um, let's bring in that next oscillator. But what I'm going to do is throw that saw or that um, that square wave on. Let's bring it down an octave. So we're already starting to get uh, get a really nice, very analogy, beefy, warm sound going on here. So rather than play this myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get these uh, these chords. Uh, playing from my Ableton project and have those come into the synthesizer. So that's already sounding real cool. And that's, that's just saw wave, some square wave, nothing else. We, we've just increased the, uh, the density of the saw a little bit, nothing too crazy. And then uh, with the uh, the square wave in there, that uh, with that lower octave, it just really beefs that sound up uh, quite nicely. But what I'm going to do is uh, let, let's actually add a little bit of decay, and drop that sustain a touch. Yeah, like it's not going to be hugely noticeable, but what you're going to find. So I up that decay a bunch but I just dropped the sustain ever so slightly. So what's gonna happen with the volume is it's gonna slowly make its way up and then just drop a little bit before kind of holding steady until it releases. And then when it releases, we get that kind of end bit, that end drop there. Yeah, I like that sound already. Um, let's see what, the, what our filter is gonna do here. what happens when we start kind of messing around with wave shapes. So this is always a fun thing to do, is especially when you've got the knobs right there. So start... Like almost pretending you've got LFO on these oscillators. I think that's actually going to create a really neat sound. So what I'll do is I'll see what we got for oscillator one yeah we don't need it too too fast so what I'm gonna do is get both of these uh, let's go into our uh, LFO settings so common is off and so uh, I kind of want that that way because depending on uh, 
you know, how things engage within this uh, synthesizer. Uh, by not having a common uh, oscillator, you can have, uh, or, or common LFO, you can have the uh, LFO start kind of drifting on a per voice basis. So I can end up with, uh, with one oscillator uh, on one voice being slightly different than an oscillator on another voice. So if I'm, uh, if I'm hitting multiple keys at once, we can see some uh, divergence between uh, the wave shapes on the different keys that are being pressed. Uh, while that might not necessarily be quite obvious, it is something that can happen uh, depending on how you kind of initialize things. So, you know, maybe now we'll start seeing some different, uh, different voicing off oscillations happening. already hear the effect of that but we don't want it to be too quickly so we've got some nice evolution going on here
have some uh, some headroom to start really driving that uh, that amplifier. Uh, let's go into our voice filter. I want post filter drive. So I'll just up the pre filter drive a little bit. Let's bring up the post filter drive. in soon. I just want to know what, what's going on when we're actually modify, modifying some of these effects here. Let's now bring in a bit of reverb. Let's really make this nice and big.
So that drift is actually going to create a little bit of detuning. And you're already kind of hearing that as, uh, as the oscillator frequencies kind of act like an unstable analog circuit. So let's go two voices. just to make it easier to, to hear while I'm talking. start getting past 20 or even close to 20 for that matter we're going to notice some pretty heavy detuning in here especially since we're already running like drift and diverge on the oscillator so it's already self detuning uh, as it is so if we bring that up It's actually acting not, not as crazy as I thought. But as you can definitely tell, it's very heavily detuned, and I don't quite like when it gets uh, that heavily detuned. Yeah, I like how we're, we're still nice and smooth. Let's play a bit with the uh, the filter a bit, uh, a little more. So, got our 24 dB.
definitely prefer it as a low pass, but like I said, it never hurts to try it. It's only a couple button clicks away. Uh, I know this uh, this also has a, a dual pull filter, which I don't fully understand the dual pull filter, just because I need to have a spectrometer uh, in front of me, which I don't at the moment. I will try and get that soon, and then hopefully be able to have uh, have the uh, uh, display overlaid on the video uh, while I'm doing this stuff. Um, if I do get a chance to do that, uh, hopefully soon, then you'll be able to see the effects of some of these um, uh, these actions on the actual, uh, not just the sound wave, but the overall frequency spectrum. This I really like. This sounds like we're kind of getting more towards the, the end of things, so this is kind of the reverse envelope uh, that I've got going on right now. Um, just because I did the reverse envelope when I switched over to the high pass filter just to allow um, the high pass filter to kind of lower its cutoff as it gets uh, uh, gets later into the, uh, the trigger. Um, which makes sense if you want to bring in a little more low frequency, but now what's happening because I got the low pass filter on, that reverse envelope is now starting the low pass where the cutoff is and then bringing it down even lower, only allowing, you know, less and less low frequency, or, or yeah, less, less low frequency content. Yeah, something like that. Because I'm not sure what the frequency is that we're cutting off at uh, right now. Uh, if I had to guess anything, it's probably somewhere around like the 500 hertz range to one kilohertz range. And then it's bringing the cutoff down closer to probably the, the 100 hertz range um, with the uh, with the envelope. So you can tell here, I'll just, quote, I'll just shut up for a sec. Hear the effect of that LFO on there as well. Because technically that envelope should re-trigger with each set of keys that's pressed, but it doesn't sound exactly the same every time because I do have LFO1 affecting the, the frequency cutoff as well. So I can actually just drop that a little bit. more consistent from note to note, which would probably work better if uh, if you're doing this type of a frequency cutoff uh, in the song. Because, yeah, it, it, I would imagine that it would create some kind of level of inconsistency or dissonance if you have the LFO kind of managing uh, that, that frequency cutoff and you get, you know, a, a chord that comes in and it sounds like the timbre is quite a bit different than the, the previous chord. That might be what you're going for. Um, that may or may not necessarily work within uh, uh, within the sound that we're trying to aim for. Um, so right now this is off of a 24 dB cutoff. So I'm just gonna bring that to a 12 dB to bring in some more of those higher frequencies and see how that sounds. Yeah, so we get a little bit more of that in. It's not too bad. Now let's bring the resonance up and see where that gets us. frequency up a touch. Uh, it's too much. I, don't I think when I've got a 12 dB uh, filter, you don't need, need too much. Nice. Um, I don't know if I did anything with the delay. so low now is uh, oscillator 3 is practically useless so one of the things that we can do with oscillator 3 even though we're kind of cutting things off a little bit is uh, let's let's bring it down but I'm gonna see what happens if we uh, bring up some of the v-sync on that oscillator this does give the sound a bit more of a thin sound not sure what 
exactly we're going to get, but let's find out. trailing off there.
So I've got almost no size on, well, I've got no size on the reverb right now. signal back again. And we can see how that sub fits in. Nice. So yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this as is. So what I'm gonna do is um save this patch and I'm just going to quickly switch over to another uh, uh, pad patch that I had prepared. Yeah, so I got a little more higher frequency sounds in that one. So I think they might work fairly decent together, we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll try that later. I'm not going to do that in this video, uh, just because I will have to actually record the two separate uh, into Ableton, which I'm not set up to, to do that right now. And uh, we'll, I'll kind of do that in the off time. Right now, we'll uh, look at doing some other patches here soon. Um, but uh, yeah, for, for now, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this particular uh, patch design that, uh, that I worked on. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to do more of these things. I'd love to do some more, more stuff with Ableton Push, uh, creating some techno and some house and, and things like that. But for now, uh, I'll continue working on this song and uh, hopefully uh, get something out to you closer to the end of the month. But uh, yeah, take care and have a good night.